Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about macroeconomics. Before starting this video like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Macroeconomics is the study of how an entire economy, the market or other large-scale systems, acts. Macroeconomics investigates macroeconomic phenomena such inflation, price fluctuations, economic growth, national income, GDP, and variations in unemployment. Macroeconomics addresses key questions such as, what causes unemployment? Inflation causes what spurs economic growth. Macroeconomics studies how well an economy performs, what drives it, and how it may improve. Macroeconomics examines the overall performance, structure, and behavior of the economy, whereas microeconomics examines the choices made by individual players like people, households, industries, etc. Economics has two facets, macroeconomics and microeconomics. Macroeconomics, as the name implies, studies the economy as a whole. Simply said, it looks at how the economy works as a whole, then at how different sectors interact to understand how the total works. This covers unemployment, GDP, and inflation. Macroeconomists create models to explain these linkages. Governments employ macroeconomic models and predictions to help develop and evaluate economic, monetary, and fiscal policy. Businesses use them to plan for domestic and global markets, and investors use them to foresee and plan asset class movements. A massive government budget and the impact of economic policies on consumers and businesses plainly make macroeconomics a vital field. When used properly, economic theories can shed light on how economies work and the long-term effects of policies and decisions. Understanding how macroeconomic trends and policies affect specific industries can help firms and investors make better decisions. Macroeconomic Limits it's also vital to recognize economic theories' limitations. Theories often lack details like taxation, regulation, and transaction costs. In the actual world, there are issues of social preference and conscience that are not amenable to mathematical investigation. Even with the limitations of economic theory, monitoring main macroeconomic indices like GDP, inflation, and unemployment is vital. The economic conditions in which companies operate have a substantial impact on their performance, and macroeconomic information can help investors make smarter decisions and identify turning moments. It's also useful to know which theories are favored by a certain government. A government's economic principles will influence how it approaches taxation, regulation, spending, and other measures. Investors can behave confidently if they understand economics and the repercussions of economic decisions. Monetary Policy Research Macroeconomics is a large science, but two areas of research stand out. The first is long-term economic expansion, or gains in national income. Second, causes and effects of short-term variations in national income and employment, the business cycle. GDP Growth Economic growth refers to a rise in total output. Macroeconomists study elements that promote or impede economic growth in order to support policies that encourage growth, progress, and growing living standards. An inquiry into the nature and causes of the wealth of nations, by Adam Smith, was probably the first and certainly one of the key publications in this branch of inquiry. Macroeconomists began studying growth with rigorous mathematical models in the 20th century. Growth is often modeled as a function of physical, human, labor, and technological capital. Cycles The business cycle occurs when important macroeconomic indicators like employment and national output fluctuate up and down, expanding and contracting over long-term macroeconomic growth trends. The 2008 financial crisis is a contemporary example, while the 1930s Great Depression sparked most modern macroeconomic theory. Macroeconomic history. While the word macroeconomics is relatively new, around 1940, many of the key concepts have been studied for much longer. Unemployment, prices, growth, and trade have all been concerns of economists since the discipline's inception, albeit their study has become increasingly focused and specialized. Early work by Adam Smith and John Stuart Mill explicitly addressed themes now recognized as macroeconomics. Macroeconomics as we know it now began with John Maynard Keynes' 1936 publication of the general theory of employment, interest, and money. Keynes explained why commodities went unsold and workers went unemployed during the Great Depression. 
Keynes' hypothesis aimed to explain choppy markets. Prior to Keynes' views becoming famous, economists did not distinguish between micro and macroeconomics. Supply and demand laws were considered to interact between particular markets to bring the economy into general equilibrium. As outlined by Leon Walras, economists like Knut Wicksell, Irving Fisher, and Ludwig von Mises explained the relationship between goods markets and large-scale financial variables like price levels and interest rates. As Keynes' views evolved over the century, they became known as Keynesian economics. Macroeconomic Theories Schools of thought in macroeconomics differ on how markets and their participants work. Classical Based on Adam Smith's initial views, classical economists believed prices, wages, and rates are flexible and markets tend to clear. The term classical economists refers to a group of economists who, while disagreeing with Karl Marx and Keynes, did not distinguish macroeconomics from microeconomics. Keynesian Keynesian economics grew out of John Maynard Keynes' work and marked the birth of macroeconomics as a distinct field from microeconomics. Keynesians emphasize aggregate demand as the main driver of unemployment and business cycles. Keynesians think that active government involvement in fiscal, spending more in recessions to increase demand, and monetary policy can manage the business cycle, stimulating demand with lower rates. Keynesian economists think that the system has rigidities, particularly sticky pricing, that inhibit proper supply and demand clearing. Monetarist the monetarist school owes its existence to Milton Friedman's publications. Monetarists claim that monetary policy is a more effective and desirable tool for managing aggregate demand than fiscal policy. Within Keynesian frameworks, monetarists recognize the limitations of monetary policy and prefer to follow principles that encourage stable inflation rates. NC. The new classical school, like the new Keynesians, aims to reconcile the theoretical difficulties between microeconomics and macroeconomics. The new classical school stresses microeconomics and models based on it. In their macroeconomic models, new classical economists assume that all actors seek to maximize utility and have rational expectations. New classical economists argue that monetary policy can manage inflation and that fiscal policy is disruptive. Keynesian. The new Keynesian school tries to give conventional Keynesian theories microeconomic basis, while new Keynesians acknowledge that people and enterprises act on rational expectations. They believe that market failures exist, such as sticky prices and wages. The government can improve macroeconomic conditions by adjusting fiscal and monetary policies. Austrian. The Austrian school is an older economic school that is gaining appeal because Austrian economists, like classical economists, never strictly separated micro and macroeconomics. Austrian theories have substantial consequences for what are otherwise considered macroeconomic concerns. The Austrian business cycle theory discusses the function of money and banking in linking microeconomic marketplaces together and across time. M2M, Macro Micro Microeconomics, on the other hand, focuses on minor issues that influence individual and corporate decisions. Factors examined in microeconomics and macroeconomics often interact. For example, the overall unemployment rate affects the pool of available labor. Macroprudential aggregation has a tendency to behave in ways that are distinct from or even opposed to similar microeconomic variables. According to the paradox of thrift, while saving money can help an individual develop wealth, collectively increasing saves can slow the economy and reduce overall wealth. Microeconomic studies economic trends, or what happens when people make particular choices. Buyers, sellers, and business owners are common subgroups. These actors interact based on supply and demand for resources, using money and interest rates as pricing mechanisms. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.